In this tutorial, I'll cover how to denoise your renders in Redshift for Cinema 4D. Make sure you check which version of Redshift you have. The denoising features only exist in Redshift version 2.6 and above. To apply the Altus denoiser to your render, open up the Redshift render settings. Scroll down to Denoise. And then under Engine, we're going to choose Altus Single Pass. And then we're going to kick off a new render. So I've gone ahead and rendered out the same frame with and without the denoiser. On the right is the denoised frame and on the left is the original. You can see a ton of noise in the shadows of the original frame. There's definitely enough noise that it would be very visible in a full animated render. But on the right, I don't see any noise. The denoiser has done quite a good job of smoothing everything out and making it much cleaner. At the bottom, I have the render times and you can see that the denoised frame only took 15 seconds more than the original frame. So not a huge increase on render time. Now that I've shown you how to quickly apply the denoiser to your render, I'm going to go over a few details in regards to applying the denoiser in Redshift. Under the engine dropdown, you'll see three different types of denoiser. The short of it is, just use the Altus single pass, it's the best one. Altus dual pass is just an older version of Altus single pass and will increase your render times a lot. Optics is nice because you can use it interactively in the render view, but it's inconsistent and doesn't do a good job with animation. So we're just going to stick to the Altus single pass. Now if we go down into the Altus options, you'll see these KC and KF parameters. These settings allow us to control the quality and strength of the denoising effect. KC1 controls high frequency details, so these are going to be sharp, smaller details in your image. KC2 controls the medium frequency detail. And KC3, of course, controls the lower frequency detail, so the larger, chunkier bits of your image. The lower the KC value, the lower the strength of the denoise in that part of the image. So if you have a particularly fine part of your image that doesn't require a lot of denoising, you could bring down the KC1 value to avoid smoothing over any details. Or say you have a large, chunky part of your image that requires a lot of denoising, you could turn up the KC4 value, and that should apply more denoising strength to that particular part of the image. KF just controls the overall strength of the denoising effect. So the higher the value, the more denoise you get. The lower the value, the less denoise you get. So there is one setting you're going to want to adjust if you're rendering an animation. Go to the Unified Sampling menu, and you're going to want to check off the randomized pattern every frame. Normally, when you're rendering an animation, you want your noise to be different frame to frame because that will give you a more realistic result and it will be more similar to shooting a video on a camera. But in our case, we want the noise to remain consistent frame to frame so that when the denoising effect smooths each frame, the effect is consistent and we don't get this weird jumping splotchiness across our rendered frames. So make sure that randomized pattern every frame is checked off when you're doing an animation. So the final thing to consider is that denoising can ruin the image if your sample settings aren't set correctly. You can't just have your sample set super low with a super grainy image and then expect the denoise effect to just clean everything up and look it to look okay. It's not going to happen. You're going to get this wildly weird smoothing effect over the image. So it's important to remember that you want to set your samples in a way that you clean up 80% 85%, 90% of the noise, and then use the denoise effect to clean up that final 10, 15% of noise in your image. All right, so that was a tutorial on denoising in Redshift. I hope you found this helpful. If you did, please throw me a like down below. You can check me out on Instagram. The link is in my description. I post there pretty much daily, just various renders behind the scenes of what I'm working on. If you have any questions, throw them in the comments down below, and I'll do my best to answer them. And I will see you all in the next tutorial.